Okay, so we just got some more news regarding Mr. Joe Biden and his currently abysmal approval rating. So this is an article from The Hill that details the following. Biden's approval dips to 36% in new Quinnipiac poll. So President Joe Biden's approval rating is down to just 36% in a new Quinnipiac University poll, signaling trouble for Democrats as they head into 2022. The president's current approval rating is down a point from 37% last month. According to the poll, disapproval with his job performance also ticked up slightly to 53% from 52% in October. Biden gets his worst reviews on the handling of the economy and foreign policy. That's actually detrimental, and I'll tell you why in just a second. With 34% and 33% approving, respectively, 59% of respondents say they disapprove of his handling of the economy, while 55% disapprove of his performance on foreign policy. 30, just 37% of respondents say the president has good leadership skills compared to 57% who believe he does not. And a slight majority, 51%, say they do not believe the president is honest, while 42% say he is. Respondents are divided 47% to 47% on whether they believe Biden cares about average Americans. When it comes to Biden's response to the coronavirus pandemic, 45% of Americans say they approve of his performance, while 50% disapprove. Likewise, 41% give him positive remarks on climate change compared to 48% who disapprove. The latest numbers from the uh, Quinnipiac's poll app, uh, offer a gloomy outlook for Democrats who are preparing to defend their slim House and Senate majorities in 2022. And I think I will actually just stop there. So this is outstanding. Um, and look, his approval rating has been abysmal for some time now. And it's just been dropping and dropping and dropping. I mean, this is in the kind of territory of a of a George W. I mean, I, this is really, really bad, the Democrats, man. And they have no one to blame but themselves. And corporate media. And I'll get into that in just a second. Actually, I'll get into that right now. So... What bothers me about this is his approval rating in regards to foreign policy. It's sad. And I know you're saying, well, what do you mean by that? Well, it's sad because, look, they're not the people, the voters, they're not upset that he droned uh, innocent babies and civilians in Kabul you know, the retaliatory drone strike for the uh, suicide bombing. Maybe they don't even know about that. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. But that's not the reason, you know. They're upset about the Afghanistan thing. Why? Because corporate media propagandized the fuck out of the American people by running endless propaganda. It's manufacturing consent. It's Noam Chomsky manufacturing consent 101. When he pulled out of Afghanistan, corporate media rushed in and told everybody how bad it was. And that's way they're thinking drastically. It did. Want to know why? Because the American people, the vast majority of them, agree that we should end the war in Afghanistan, that we should end all the wars, basically. Right. But once we did it, it became this shit show. Look, pulling out of it was never going to be clean anyway. But corporate media made it something that it shouldn't have been. And it became, oh, but it's the way that we did it and all this here. And so the opinions got swayed. And that's why, at least in my opinion, and I think I'm right on this. His approval rating on foreign policy is so abysmal. Now, has he done terrible things? Yes, I just pointed out the drone strike. Um, he drone Syria, I believe, Somalia. He's been terrible in many respects on foreign policy. I mean, the issue in Yemen, Saudi Arabia is doing a genocide in Yemen. And he said, OK, well, we're not going to support them offensively anymore, only defense. OK, well, then what the fuck do you define as defense? Very vague explanations he's giving here. So he he has been bad on foreign policy, but I just know that that's not what the American people are considering, which is honestly unfortunate. But let's get into his approval rating as a whole. Look, man, him and the Democrats are terrible right now because they're being Democrats. And being a Democrat in today's day and age essentially consists of the following. Promising the American people things that you're never going to deliver on. And that has been their entire shtick. I mean, it started when he first got elected with the $1,400 checks. Remember how it was supposed to be $2,000 checks? You elect Warnock and uh, the senator or Ossoff and whatever the fuck their names are, and you'll get a $2,000 check. So quickly did that turn into a $1,400 check because, oh, you already got $600 from the previous president. Not even from him, from the previous guy. He failed on the $15 minimum wage at the federal level. 
I mean, this Build Back Better agenda, it started at $3.5 trillion and slowly but surely got whittled down, provision after provision got torn away, provisions that are incredibly popular, provisions that they've been promising for years. I mean, it's just happening before the, the, the eyes of the American people. They're not raising taxes on the people who taxes should be raised to wealthy of this country. And the working people in the middle class, I hesitate to call it that even anymore because it's been utterly destroyed doesn't really exist anymore, are going to continue to suffer. And in a lot of respects, I mean, the, the people are right. He has been doing abysmal and it's been terrible. And they really need to turn things around. And how do they do that? Look, man, at this point, they have a prayer's chance of keeping the majorities in the House and the Senate and what they have right now. I mean, look, dude, even if they do what I'm about to outline, they could still get just destroyed because they waited too long and they've let this um, anger and angst just settle in with the people. And it's been eating at them and they're in for a very bad situation coming into the midterms and especially coming into the next uh, election. If Biden wants to run again or they want to run Kamala or Mayor Pete or any of these Democratic shields that lack charisma that are insanely corrupt, that don't have a spine. I mean, just terrible people, terrible politicians. They're just going to get wiped out if they run any of them. But look, if they want to have even a prayer's chance of not even retaining their majorities because they're probably not, but just not getting wiped out as bad as they could, they should do the following. Immediately legalize marijuana. Immediately uh, get rid of student loan debt. Um, uh, he, through executive order, he can do a lot to lower drug prices since they're doing this compromise bullshit that's in the Build Back Better agenda, since they're not going to go full on lower drug price for Americans. Okay, through your executive authority, do what you can do to lower drug prices for Americans. Free the nonviolent drug offenders that you can uh, at the federal level. I mean, just do whatever it is that you can. I mean, there's, there are things that he can do with just the presidency, and he doesn't have to use this bitch-made excuse of, oh, it can't get through Congress. You know, if they really cared, which they don't, then they would, and they would have, at the very least, a prayer's chance of maybe not even re retaining their majorities, but not getting wiped out as bad as they could. But needless to say, he's going to do none of that. He's not going to try to fix the problems of the system. I mean, that's far beyond to ask of a character like Joe Biden. He's not going to rise to the occasion. He's not going to dramatically improve people's lives. I don't mean to sound nihilistic. I'm just being honest. And they're going to get wiped out. And I mean, the further this approval rating drops, the more dire we will know the situation is.